Hello, it's one four six here. I want to talk about um, a paper I've written recently, which is highly theoretical in nature, very um, speculative, I suppose. But it's about the P equals MP problem in computer science. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about that. My mate Scott asked if I do a kind of layman's version explanation of what I'm dealing with in this paper or what problem I'm trying to solve so I figured I'd do that um, it's not really finished I need to check some of the math on it and stuff but it's the basic kind of ideas are there and it is kind of like a thought experiment paper because essentially it relies the for P to equal MP it does rely on a Technology to be around that isn't doesn't exist. So, like I said, it's a highly speculative and theoretical paper, essentially. So, what I'll probably do now is just talk through it and try and explain some of the my thought processes behind it. I guess. So, uh, proof that P could equal PNP. Proof that P can equal NP via theoretical quantum information preprocessors. Um, abstract. In this paper I posit with algebra and propositional logic that problems represented as information in a computer system or the superset P can theoretically be solved over time by artificial intelligence. I do this by merging relational algebra, set theory for mathematics, the mathematical proofs, non-deterministic quantum physics and computing theory from theoretical physics and finally using propositional logic for the final proof to solve the problem P equals MP over polynomial time and propose a new law of quantum computing quantum law of preprocessing now I wrote this very late and I kind of realised I'm being a bit over the top I think in a, uh, thinking that I've actually got developed a new law or something definitely being a bit OTT there but it was late, it was like 4 in the morning when I finished this off so I, I, I thought I had a eureka moment and then upon further reading I realised probably not <laughs> but anyway um, let's go on so I'll just I'll tell you what the PA equals MP problem is basically as well let's read there Let's read from the Wikipedia because it's just easier and I can't be bothered to really go into something long winded. So it's basically problems in polynomial time in processing those problems. So P equals a problem in polynomial time, NP equals a problem in non polynomial time. Um, and yeah. go further into this again so what's the basic problem of it if P were to equal MP then it means that all problems that can be solved in nominal time polynomial time can be solved in non-deterministic uh, time as well Kind of model that. So I'll probably cut that bit out. So, I mean, the kind of thing I thought, and it's pretty naive solution, or it's making a lot of assumptions. But I was kind of just doing this as an exercise for myself, was to re think about the idea of developing a quantum processor, I suppose, or a, pr a computer processor that. Um, processes information so every time it processes a bit of information i.e. a 0 or 1 
it processes as one if it's zero or one at the same time as zero or at the same time in the same time frame of like a second or nanosecond or whatever time frame you're working and operating with it. So that's one way I thought you might be able to do it, but I want to describe some of the mathematics which I've used to demonstrate that this might be possible theoretically. Um, so I'll describe some of the um, symbols I've used and what some of those mathematical, what some of the mathematical um, algebraic expressions I've used mean. So I've just defined a few different letters for to represent different things. T representing polynomial time. I speed of information transfer. So I the speed of information as it travels along a whatever the distribution medium is. Um i.e. a wire or cable, whatever it may be. So in this specific example I suppose it's a processor so it would just be the circuit the speed the information travels on the circuit essentially what that would be in this instance because it's about processors and how com a computer processor will set them um, solve problems okay uh, sets of information relational algebra and set theory is what the mathematics I'm using here so we've got a superset of P with the subsets of P, H, and P, S. Uh, P, H are hard problems that are hard to solve over a lot of time. P, S is problems that are easier to solve over less time. Um, and the reasons for that will become apparent later on. N, P, which is a set of non polynomial problems. Um, so I've put the superset P within. MP, all hard and soft problems are theoretically solved by a AI given access to infinite information complexity within a polynomial of time, which is a pretty broad statement and a pretty big, grandiose statement, so I'm aware of how silly that sounds in a way. Not P, hard problems cannot be solved over polynomial of time. Uh, I need to check my maths on this, but I think it's okay to do put that uh, P into the set of that. Um, logical assumptions. If you have enough info, uh, NP does not equal information squared. If you have enough information, you have no problems. Again, I need to check that one again. P does not equal times square times itself to the power of time. If you have problems which process an out, oh, sorry, if you have problems which process an outside relativistic space time or hard software. Problems can be solved because time can no longer be understood in a relativistic manner, i.e., quantum time. Theoretically, possible given developments in quantum computing over time, which are represented as a T in the paper. P to the power of time, but by itself, does not equal. Um, non non polynomial problems squared. So basically that's the same problems over time, they're not creating more problems mathematically I suppose. Um, and then I put information squared equals uh, time squared and information squared over time, which means processing an infinite information set is possible if time exists in both possible states. Well it's not infinite actually, I need to reassess that. I.e. P problems are hard equals P equals MP and problems which are uh, easier problems, soft problems, P equals not MP. With quantum preprocessors, i.e., both hard state and soft state problems are solved at the same time using the theoretical quantum preprocessor technology I proposed. Now, reading through a lot of this, I realise I need to just like look at a lot of it and check over it a lot more because, though it's interesting, and my approach I think is interesting. The solutions I'm making are just very broad and also some of them are contradictory, so I need to like check all the contradictions. But anyway, let's just look at some of my abstract propositional logic statements. Well, basically what I'm trying to do this bit is define the problems, write a little bit about them, and then also describe them mathematically, propositional logic. 
following propositions in order to define the problem of PM because I'm PM my assumptions. Information squared is uh, NP is less than information squared. Given enough information, all problems can be solved or can be expressed as problems over time and problems over time squared is less time is less than that. Many problem is not a problem over enough time and time time um, by itself time to the power of itself is more than problems over polynomial time. When you consider a non relativistic time to solve a problem, there are no problems that can't be solved because the normal laws of time are not in operation, i.e. Um, non-deterministic time is defined in Schrodinger's uncertainty principle. So this is the same as the cat and the, this is the zero information exists in both states simultaneously. Um, and my assumption there is that then you can solve problems double the rate you can solve them at because, or even more because you've got double the amount of information being processed. So like I said, I'm going to go on what assumptions, but I'm just kind of, it's a theoretical thought experiment, don't take it seriously. Um, so this then implies problems um, over time equals no problems over time because time and information, time, time by itself and information is part of the power of itself. So if the set P can be solved over non-deterministic time, then no problems can be solved under non-deterministic time, and P equals does not equal MP. The final proposition presents a problem, so the final proposition is a contradiction and needs to be solved, otherwise P does not equal MP, and P will never equal MP. Solution does not equal P, take away. Um, pff, this mathematically needs to sort out big time. I took this one again. I think I got this wrong. Does not equal P equals P times information times itself, the power of time. There are no problems if the set of all problems P has access to an infinite information set, information by itself, times power of itself, no limitations on time. A non deterministic time frame from which to gain access to information to solve a problem with P or time to the information itself in a theoretical computer AI. Inclusion of propositions. If processes are operating via non deterministic time principles, problems can then theoretically be solved by doubling solutions on the information levels I was talking about before in non deterministic time with quantum parallel processing or not P equals P information times itself to the power of time. The polynomial time sets and equations, I need to check all this again as well. Uh, I must prove that given enough time, problems can be solved if there is enough accessible information in data sets which represents the data set. Uh, so just describe this sigma t mp to the power of 1 equals i for information just given uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lit, within brackets. Um, then the information regression problem is if, pro if you, all the polynomial problems equals brackets i brackets t t t t t t where t equals the reduction of time or um, p hard problems and p soft problems equals the same thing again i t t t t this makes no sense it results in infinite regression back to t um, which that's, I need to check all that again, but I need to work on this section. It's probably one of the bits of work at least on this. To be honest. Solution in non deterministic framework. However, if time can be measured in nanoseconds, so if you eliminate the problem of time, is most people experience it, and it occurs in two simultaneous time frames by quantum superstition and information. So, um, information squared. And both exist in both an on and off state at the same time, time squared, and the framework of time squared, then um, that what I said before becomes times the power of itself, sigma mp to the power of itself equals information to the power of itself, one, two, three, four, 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 etc. Theoretically, then, the superset now becomes i information to the power of t because solving the set of all problems in p is just a problem of information over time. 
or the sum total of the subset of um, P Harden and P soft problems. Because P does not equal time, solving the problems of set P is just a question of deterministic time in relativistic linear time and not non deterministic quantum time. So basically, what I'm saying there is that. Um, just because you can't solve these things in deterministic time doesn't mean in a non-deterministic framework you can't solve them, essentially. This proves a propositional logic of P equals MP because it reframes a problem P to be a question of non-deterministic time and information sets and not one of computation of indeterministic time, i.e. Moore's law of processing power. If this theory is correct, it's a new paradigm in computer processing theory and information theory. I doubt it is, but I'll just put it on there anyway. And I propose to call this law the new quantum law of pre-processing. Now, I doubt it is a new law. I think it was, it was late at night when I wrote that, but I'll just put it on there regardless. Um, okay, so th here's some proofs in mathematical form. Propositional form of the subsets of P equals MP given that P equals hard problems and uh, P at S are easier ones to solve for a linear determinants of time. So I've put, um, this needs looking at again, so P hard problems is less than P equals um, MP brackets, P small problems is more than NP, Oof, I need to look at that again recently, but hard problems, this is where the, we're getting more into the mathematical meeting I suppose. Uh, problems hard over nominal time equals MP to the power of itself, time and uh, problems of information and NP uh, MP no from MP time does not equal uh, problem P to the power of itself time squared equals P bracket no problems of information by the power of itself then therefore no problems of time equals no problems of information and time does not equal problems of time then p problems hard are p equals mp problems solvable like essentially it's what i've written there and i'll try and put that up on a readable form because i'm trying to read it as best i can soft problems then uh, no np problems mm equals time and NP information and problems in time and problems hard are more than P equals MP and therefore problems hard are less than P equals MP and NP um, time and MP information and problems in time and Problems hard are more than P equals MP, um, which leads to proof of P equals MP over polynomial time using propositional logic, which I'm not even sure is correct yet, but it's fun to ponder. P equals MP, this is the final law basically, or the proof that I've posited, which needs a lot of checking. Uh, P equals MP, problems hard are less than problems equals MP and NP equals brackets time and NP information and P time and P hard problems are more than problems NP and P does not equal NP um, problems brackets problems small less than problems equals NP and NP equals time and NP information and problems time and problems small problems plus are more than problems np problems does not equal np therefore p equals np uh, what does this potentially mean and it's, i doubt it's right but it's just a it's really like i said just an experiment if the proof is correct, over time problems of information can be solved within a theoretical quantum law of preprocessing and quantum preprocessing, an abstract diagram of which is detailed in the appendix to the paper. The paper also posits that time to the power of time multiplied by the power of information itself over time means that P can equal MP for both hard and soft problems in polynomial time. 
is a problem that requires a technical solution and the next stage of mathematics can develop practically to develop my theory of theoretical service worker AI. Which I'll talk a bit now honestly. Conclusion, so I'll just wrap everything up now and like I said. Please don't be too insulting. This is just really me just asking around and having a laugh. And uh, seeing where how far I can push my mind with this problem. Um, a non-deterministic AI can therefore solve all problems in a given problem set. This paper has theoretically proved that if one possesses a theoretical quantum information preprocessor that is capable of in two simultaneous time spatial dimensions, where quantum superposition, i.e., information squared equals time squared and information squared to the power of time, using it as advanced as yet uninvented futuristic quantum compute processes, then one can solve all hard and soft problems before they occur in the space time continuum. Oh, please, yeah, yeah. Because I solve problems already solved before they occur in the theoretical preprocessor that AI can predict all possible problems before they occur in the general space-time continuum as defined by Einstein in his theory of general relativity. And quantum superstition is defined by Heisenberg in the theoretical high-powered quantum computer preprocessor. A Schrodinger's preprocessor, if you like, a metaphor being a quantum preprocessor as exists, uh, a zero exists, a one and a one is a zero at the same time in linear and non-deterministic time. Well, Actually, not linear. Scrub that bit. I think that's just me making a mistake in the brain. The technology, of course, is out of our reach at present, and it assumes that AI can function on a level that can predict all possible outcomes of any possible decision, and it's opposite on a piece of information over time. So, therefore, at this point, it's highly theoretical in nature, as I said about 10 million times, but there's been massive possible implications for cryptology and computer security given that theoretically the quantum computing could be on a paradigm in the next few decades or even years and may predict profoundly affect all aspects of cybersecurity and cryptology. Right, anyway, we've been talking for ages. Service worker AI, because I've just put in some stuff on this. Ethical and technological considerations. Um, oh, there's no point getting into this, actually, to be honest. Yeah, it's, I've done this mostly just for Scott's benefit. But um, if anyone's interested in that, let me know. I've it's pretty difficult to try and translate that paper into something that I can present in any meaningful fashion. It's a paper show. Need some rewriting and redrafting. I need to check out all the maths and I need to check out all the assumptions and blah blah blah. But if you've watched, cheers and I hope you've got something out of it at least. It's, uh, like I said, it's mostly been an exercise for me. It's not. I don't really want people coming on here and just giving me proper hardcore like criticism. It's just me having an experiment, and I'm far too used to like people coming on and being really abusive online. So I'd rather just 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 don't. Please.